In this video, we discuss some of the common primitive data types. The data we store and use in computer programs comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. We refer to these as data types. Different data types take up different amounts of memory. To optimise program performance, it's important we use the correct data type wherever possible. There are many different data types. The ones you need to know about for the exam are integer, real or float, boolean, character and string. Although the number, type and name of primitive data types vary between languages, all languages support primitive data types. A primitive data type is any basic data type provided by a language as a foundational building block. Most languages allow more complex data types, often referred to as composite data types, to be constructed from the primitive ones. The integer data type represents any positive or negative whole number. And some examples are shown here. The real data type, often referred to as a float, represents any positive or negative real world quantity that can be expressed as a number. Importantly here, we can now include numbers with fractional or decimal components. The character data type, as the name suggests, represents a single character. Now this can be any alphanumeric character or symbol from a character set. It doesn't have to be a letter. The string data type represents a collection of characters. Much like the character data type, the string data type is not limited to letters. It can include any alphanumeric characters, punctuation or other symbols. The Boolean data type can be used to represent one of two truth values associated with logic and Boolean algebra, typically true or false. You'll have come across the Boolean data type when writing conditional programming statements, where the flow of code changes depending on whether a Boolean expression is true or false. Virtually all languages provide you with a way to convert the data type to another, known as casting. For example, if someone enters one from the keyboard, this is the character one and not the numerical value one. You would typically convert the character to an integer before carrying out, say, mathematical operations on it. Each language has its own syntax for casting. In the exam, you will use the syntax shown here. Now, data types look different depending on the chosen language. So just take an example here from this table of the Boolean data type. In Python, it's lowercase b-o-o-l. In VB, it's the full word Boolean. In C sharp, again, it's lowercase, and in Java, it's lowercase, but the full word Boolean. Now, bear this in mind so you don't get confused in the exam when you see a data type that might be spelt slightly differently to one that you've been using in a programming language. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is meant by the term data type? So that's officially all you need to know for the exam. If you've got a little extra time, you might like to watch the rest of this video that goes slightly beyond the specification. So languages support far more data types than those we've covered. The ones we mentioned are the generic data types that you need to get your head around first. I mean, here, for example, on the table on the left, you can see that C sharp supports 11 different data types, and that's just for storing numbers. You can also see why it's crucial to choose the correct data type. Imagine 
choosing a data type to store, say, a student's test score, and that test score will always be in the range of zero to 100. Now you could store that both in the S byte data type, but you could also store it in the decimal data type. The difference is that the decimal data type would take up 16 times the amount of memory to store that when it absolutely isn't needed.